I want to look at just a couple of verses. I want to begin reading at verse number 12. When you have it, so praise the Lord. That's Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 12. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 12. When you have it, so praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it reads... For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of the darkness of this world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. And your feet fitting with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. In this part three of the spiritual darkness series that we've been dealing with throughout this month, I want to deal with part three, and part three is dress for battle. Yeah. Dressed for battle. The week before last, we dealt with knowing what you are up against. Yes. And we define what spiritual darkness is. And to be spiritually in spiritual darkness is also affiliated with spiritual blindness. And blindness is an obscure blindness in which you, it prevents you from seeing things as the way God sees them. So, and then the week after that, we dealt with knowing your adversary. In which we said that knowing your adversary is very crucial to winning the fight. And we, we, we talked about how Satan is crooked and he's cunning and he's clever and he is a formidable foe. But this week, however, I want to deal with something that we must understand that is very important to the fight. And that is that you and I must learn how to properly engage in spiritual warfare. You and I have to understand that we have to dress for battle. Oh, yeah. Let me say this. We have to dress for battle, and this is something that we must understand that, and I want you to understand because it's very important to understand this, that the dressing for the battle is not something that God is going to do. The dressing for the battle is something that you and I as believers of the most high God is going to have to do because the Bible didn't say, see, we, we live under the impression where we think that God is going to do everything, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm here to tell you that God will cooperate with you to bring forth your success in this spiritual fight. So it is God. So we have to learn that God wants us as individuals to put forth an effort to properly engage in this battle that we're in. Let me tell you something, because I want you to understand something, because you need to know this, that God is not going to do everything for you and I. Let me say this right now. And um, one thing that I've noticed that w one thing that God wasn't, won't do is he won't dress us for battle. And watch this. He won't even keep you from sin. That's your choice. It's your prerogative. 
He loved you so much that he has given us a volitional will that you can choose to serve him or you can tend, or you can choose to sin against him. But he will not do the choosing for you because it's ultimately up to you and I. So he says when he tells us to put on the whole armor of God, he, he didn't say that God was going to put on his armor. Right. He is saying that you have a responsibility for arming yourself up for this spiritual war that we are in. You have to put on the battle. Paul says here in this, 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 this uh, letter to the Ephesian church, he said, put on the whole armor of God. That's what he said. He said, put, he said for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the, this dark world, against the uh, spiritual forces of uh, the evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. The King James Version said the whole armor of God so that you, when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after all you have done, everything you stand. He said stand firm. So we must understand something about this armory that that, that, that Paul is talking about that you and I are supposed to, to uh, 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 dress in. First of all, I want you to understand that this armor is given to us for the purpose now of neutralizing and defending ourselves from a threat, a potential threat. So the, 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 this armor that God has given to us, he gives us armor just like he get, they give armor to the uh, armor to the police department or, or armor to the homeland uh, uh, security officers. They get armor. They get weapons. They, they give them weapons and they give weapons to the, the FBI. They give weapons to the CIA. They give weapons to all of the forces in the military. And I'm here to tell you God is giving us weapons. And I want you to understand something that these weapons that God have given unto us, these weapons that God have afforded unto us they are not uh, 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 carnal. The Bible said they're not carnal, but they are from another world. They are from a, another universe. See, these weapons are not physical. They are not the same weapons that the CIA get. They are not the same weapons that the police department get. They are not the same weapons that the military use, but uh, yet they are powerful than any physical weapon. So he says, I'm giving the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. They're, they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. See, the only way these weapons become mighty is you got to be use them through God. You can't you can use them like the CIA. You can't use them like the military. You have to use these weapons through the most high God. You got to use them weapons like that. So he said these weapons are used to neutralize. The threat. So that, that's why and def, to defend ourselves and to neutralize the threat. So I want to deal with today. We're going to look at some of these weapons that he have given us. Let's look at this armory that Paul said that we as believers should walk in, that we should arm ourselves with. So he says in verse number, um, um, I'm going to go to verse number 14. He says, stand firm then with the belt of truth so the first one I want to deal with is that belt of truth the reason why the belt of truth the belt of truth is on the first on Paul's list is because truth is the only thing that holds this thing together the belt of truth, when, when you're looking at a soldier, when you look at, because he is using the armory that he's talking about, he is using the example of a Roman soldier. But the belt of truth was the most important part of the armor because what the belt of truth was, it held everything together. See, let me tell you something. It is the truth of God's words that hold all this thing together. If, you're, if the, your foundation is not the truth, then everything else is going to fall apart. He says, so what you need to do is make sure that you guard, guard your lawns up with the truth because let me tell you something about the truth. The truth, the belt of truth, it, it, it got to be right because it holds the whole whole armor together but the belt of truth is what secures or holds the sword of the spirit the, 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 the soldier could not have a good uh, couldn't hold his sword if it wasn't for a belt and he said that the belt of truth is what holds the sword of the spirit but I'm going to deal with the sword of the spirit a little bit later so it's important that we 
operate in truth because Jesus said that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So if you don't have, if your foundation is not the truth, if you ain't girded with your lawns with truth, then everything else is going to fall apart. So you must understand that this belt of truth is very essential in dealing with the enemy because the enemy can't stand truth. I just told you last week that he is the father of lies. So when you stand on the truth, ladies and gentlemen, the truth of God's word will see you through. So you got to realize about this belt of truth. So number one on the list is the belt of truth. But I want to deal with number two. So we're going to, you got to realize that truth is going to hold all this thing Together, you have no, you have no complete armory if it's absent from the belt of truth, because the truth is what holds all the armor, the rest of the armor's in place. It's, it is what holds all the rest of the armor together. So number one, it's the belt of truth that should be buckled around in your waist. But number two is the breastplate of righteousness. What is it about this bre breastplate of righteousness? The, 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 the breastplate of righteousness, ladies and gentlemen, is very crucial to the armory because the breastplate of righteousness cover your vital parts. In other words, it covers your heart. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs to guard your heart above everything else because in it is the source of life. So you have to guard this heart. See, let me tell you something. If the devil get a hold of your heart, you're finished. Let me tell you something. If the devil get a hold of your heart, you're finished because you can't serve God. You serve God with the heart and you serve God with the mind. And when your heart is contaminated, that's why you have to protect it, ladies and gentlemen. You have to guard that heart. How do I guard it? I'm glad you asked. You guard it by what are you what you letting into it. You got to watch what you let into your heart, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you right now, if you're letting foolishness in your heart, you are headed for the wrong. You're headed in the wrong direction. But God, the Bible declares that we should guard this heart for in it flows out, it flows out the issues of life. When you see somebody's heart that hasn't been protected, watch what's coming out of their life. But when you guard that heart, with the breastplate of righteousness. What is the breastplate of righteousness? I'm glad you asked. The breastplate of righteousness is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let me tell you something. It is Jesus, the breastplate of righteousness that guards our heart, that keeps us protected from the enemy. So we have to realize this breastplate is the important part of our armory. We have to realize that we have to wash this heart. We have to guard this heart, especially in the times that we are living in. This ain't the time to let anything come into your heart that's not of God. If you are letting anything come into your heart that's not of God, then you might as well throw away the, brace, the breastplate because you already defeated, because you allowed the enemy to get in your heart. But you, we have to protect it by putting on the breastplate of righteousness. And that righteousness, because we in ourselves don't have no righteousness. At our best day, we don't have no righteous, righteousness. I don't care how educated you are, you still don't have enough righteousness. I don't care how much money you have, you still don't have enough righteousness. I don't care what things you possess, you don't have enough righteousness. The only righteousness that we have as believers is Jesus Christ. So when the enemy see us, when you are shielding yourself with the breastplates of righteousness, which is Jesus Christ, he cannot touch your heart because Jesus is covering your heart. That's why it's important to let Jesus Christ cover your heart. Because when he covers your heart, the enemy can't penetrate it. The enemy can't come in and just do what he want to do to your heart because it's protected. I'm glad that Jesus died. And I'm glad that when we stand before God, we don't stand in our righteousness. We stand in his righteousness. Christ's righteousness and Christ's righteousness alone. His, his, his righteousness. Righteousness. So number one, we, we, we gird our lawns with the, the belt of truth. Number two, we, we, um, number two, we put on a breastplate of righteousness. And here's number three. And number three is the fitting with the readiness 
of the God that comes from the gospel of peace. In other words, number three is what we call a shorting of the feet. Let me tell you something. And shorting of the feet is so important to the life of the believer because the feet, let, watch this now, is what carries you through this life. So you, 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 you have feet. You need your feet. And, and the Roman soldiers were very picky to protect their feet. Because when you protect your feet, the feet is the foundation on which you stand. So you got to have good feet, ladies and gentlemen, in the spiritual realm. When you are, uh, when, uh, when you are in this, this battle against uh, the, the enemy, your feet got to be good. You, this ain't, you don't need to have bad feet going into battle. Let me tell you right now, the enemy, let me tell you something, our military won't let you in with bad feet. I'm telling you right now, you got to have some good feet. You can't have no flat, no flat feet going into the military. Because they know that if you got flat feet, that you're going to be bad for battle. Let me tell you right now, and God said you got to make sure that you cover your feet. Your feet need to be covered because your feet is a sure foundation. And let me tell you something, and your feet is what's going to carry you to your destination. He said, how do you, how do you prepare? How do you charge your feet up? He said, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You better, he said, because when you charge your feet up, when you fitting your feet with the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's a peace that comes from it. Yeah. Let me tell you right now, you can be going through a storm, but long as your feet are right and you are ready for battle and your feet have been shotted with the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's a peace in knowing that you know about the gospel of yeah. Jesus Christ. It's a, it's, it's a peace in knowing that he redeemed you. It's a peace in knowing that he died and shed for all of your, your sins. It's a peace in knowing that you are with him. All things are possible. It's a peace in knowing that. So you have to make sure that you are shotting your feet with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because just like your, uh, your feet going to carry you through this life. The gospel of Jesus Christ will carry you through any storm. It will carry you through this life. Even when life get difficult. When you think about the gospel of Jesus Christ, it will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. It will give you a peace, ladies and gentlemen. That's a pass of all understanding. And people ask you, how is it that you got peace when you were in the middle of this storm? How is it? Let me tell you. Because when I think about what Jesus did for me how, and what he went through for me. And now I think about how he, he was a substitutionary death for me when I should have been on my way to hell. But he took that penalty from me. And now, every time I think about what he did. There's a peace that comes all over my body. There's a peace that comes all over my mind. He said, cover your feet. Because your feet ensures you a, a, a sound, a strong foundation. So he says, make sure you got the belt on. Make sure you got your breastplate on. Make sure... That your shoes are covered. Your feet are intact. And then this is what I like right here. Moving on to line number four. He said, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith. Which will, which, are, uh, with, with, which you can extinguish all the fly, flaming arrows of the evil one. See, let me tell you something. About this thing. When you look at the shield of faith. The shield of faith. Faith is a. Defensive weapon. So what it is. Let me tell you something. It is a defensive weapon. And, 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 and it's designed now. To deflect any attacks of the enemy. So when you, when, when, and let me tell you something, you are vulnerable if you don't have faith. Let me tell you something, you have to have faith because in this battle, if you are faithless, you will never be victorious. You have to have faith, ladies and gentlemen, because what the faith does, people don't understand the importance of the faith. Not only the, the, the faith brings into fruition things, but the faith also defends you from the fiery darts of the adversary. And then what we got to realize, your faith is a, a defense mechanism. Yeah. That's what the word of God said. When you hold up that shield of faith, it defends you. 
Not only does it bring great things into your life, but your faith defends you from the attacks of the enemy because it becomes a defensive weapon. And you got to understand about this faith. When you have faith, and I ain't talking about no wish washing faith, I'm talking about strong, saving faith in God. Let me say this again strong, uh, saving faith in God. There's a difference because a lot of people don't understand what faith really means. When you have faith in God, it's the type of trust that you believe God even unto death. No matter what it looked like, I'm going to believe God. No matter what this circumstance might dictate, I'm going to believe in what God said. I'm going to have faith in what God said. Even if this thing looked like it's going to kill me. I wish I had a witness. Even if it looked like it's going to kill me. You got to have that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego faith. Abednego faith. When they was before King Nebuchadnezzar. Facing death. But they were still optimistic. They said, King Nebuchadnezzar. We're not going to even answer those words. But even if our God don't come see about us. We're not going to bow down to that graven image. That's the type of faith God wants his children to have. When you have that type of faith, let me tell you right now, that stuff defends you from any attack of the enemy. It deflects every attack. It deflects every attack. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let me say this again here too. Without faith, you are vulnerable to Satan. Let me say this again. That's why you have to have faith. You know, the, 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 one of the most, the, one of the most uh, thing, the most, one of the most important things that Satan want to see, he want to see a child of God lose faith. The reason why he want to see a child of God to lose faith, he know once you lose faith, you have already lost the battle. He know if you if you don't lost faith, you have already lost the battle, because the faith is the thing that is one of the most important things in your armory, and it's a defensive weapon. So number one, the belt, true. Number number two, breastplate of righteous. Number three, sharding your feet. Number four, shield of faith. But here come number five. Number five is taking the helmet of salvation. Let me tell you something. You don't have no victory if you don't have no salvation. You, you don't have, if you ain't saved, you, you, vic, you, 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 you don't have no victory. He said, put on the helmet of salvation. Why? And one thing I like about the helmet of salvation, because a lot of times we have this, this preconceived notion that this helmet is just half cocked, but this helmet covers the, all of the facial features. It covers the whole head. It covers the mouth. It covers the nose. But, it, but the most important thing that it covers, it covers the brain, which is the mind. Let me tell you something. If your mind ain't covered, and your eyes ain't covered, and your mouth ain't covered, baby, you in trouble. That means you have a, you are, you are leaving yourself vulnerable and the devil know that the helmet of salvation is the most crucial part of the armory. Let me tell you something. If you don't have that helmet on, that devil will go after that head. He will give you head shots. I'm going to tell you right now. Because the helmet of salvation, watch this now, protects you and me from head force trauma. It, because if the devil know you ain't got your helmet on, he's going to give you a head shot. He's going to aim right for your head. Because he know if I can get your mind. If, if I can get your mind. Let me tell you something. And the devil knows this. If he can get your mind. Let me tell you right now. See, we, we, this is why it's so important to let God have our mind. Let the Holy Spirit have our mind. The devil knows if he can get your mind. See, let me tell you what the mind does. The brain does. It sends signals to the rest of the body. And see... 
It's predicated on who got your mind. Because whoever have your mind is going to send the right signal or the wrong signal. When the enemy have your mind, it's going to send the wrong signal to the rest of your body. And what it's going to do, have your body doing stuff completely out of the will of God. Because he got your mind. You'll be doing things that are arbitrary to what the will of God says about your life. And this is what we have. This is what we're dealing with now. We have a church, ladies and gentlemen. Most of the church, they got they're, they're, they're not putting on their armor. They are not dressed for battle. They don't have the belt of truth around them anymore because most of the church now believe more in a lie than the truth. Most of the tr- church now rather believe lies than the truth. Isaiah said that the truth is falling dead in the street. The truth now are falling dead in the streets because the church have grown now to a point that tell it receiving the truth is a challenge. We have gotten so out of order that when we are trying to readjust things, we want to get mad with the one trying to straighten things out. That's why I feel for the shepherds that selling the truth. I know they got a job trying to straighten things out. I know because it's just like a broken leg. I'm going to tell you right now, one time, uh, Dwayne was playing in a pear tree. And uh, he fell out of that tree, and he broke his arm. And I had sense enough not to clear him in that tree anymore. But when he broke his arm, we took him to the hospital. And I never had anything broken in, on my body before. But to hear him in that room hollering like that. I said to myself, I don't never, never want anything broken. And when they, when they put that bone back into place and they put that cask on it, you can hear him hollering. That's what the church is dealing with now. Now God is trying to straighten the church out and they hollering and they, they screaming, they, they yelling. And, and he's sending real men of God and real women of God to straighten the, the crooked straight. And now they want to fight off the ones that God is using to, to, to straighten things out now. But let me tell you now, you better make sure that you dress for battle. You better make sure that you have the, the truth, the better truth. on. You better make sure you got the breastplate of righteousness. You better make sure that your, you have shot at your feet with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You better make sure that you are operating in the shield of faith. You better make sure that you have these things. And you are dressed for battle. You got to make sure these things. He said in Ephesians 6 and 16, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. I want you to understand something. It's not a matter of if but when. Let me say this something. I want to say this. It's not a matter of if, but when. The devil is going to send some flaming arrows your way. Let me say this again. That's why you got to arm yourself up. It ain't a matter of if. Don't want to if the devil. No, the devil is coming, ladies and gentlemen. But you got to make sure that you are dressed and ready for battle. It ain't a matter of if, but when. He's coming. I'm here to tell you he's coming. And he's going to send flames of flaming arrows your way. And you have to have faith, watch this now, to stop them. Only faith can stop the fiery arrows of the enemy. So, we, we dealt with the shield. We dealt with the helmet of salvation. Now we want to deal with um, the sword of the spirit. We want to deal with the Sword of the Spirit. And here's one thing about the Sword of the Spirit. The Sword of the Spirit is not a defensive weapon, but it's a deadly weapon. It's a deadly weapon Because it destroys the deeds of the devil. Especially if it's in the right hand. Let me say this again. It 
got to be in the right hand in order to do this because yeah. if it's in the right hand of someone who know how to, who is skilled in using yeah. it, the sword of the spirit pierces right through yeah. the enemy's arm. Yeah. That's why you got to. That's why you got to make sure that you are armed up with this word. That's why we do the warrior's anthem, saying, "This is my Bible, my weapon for spiritual weapon. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, and I'm not afraid to use it." Because you have to understand this. I know that most of the church is reciting it, but everybody can't use it. Everybody not fit to use it because you have to become skillful in the word to be effectively to deal with the with that devil. So, that sword of the spirit is a deadly weapon. The sword of the spirit pierces right through the enemy's armor. Let me say this. The devil don't stand a chance against anyone who can properly use the sword of the spirit. He, he don't stand a chance that's why you have to increase your accuracy, ladies and gentlemen. You got to study your words. Let me tell you something. Uh, for those who are around in law enforcement or any type of security type of, uh, of job, they, they, they take us to the range sometimes to practice. And we have to do what we have by qualification. And we have to shoot. To a certain degree, to, to be able to just keep our job or to be able to stay on the fire department, the police department, you have to be able to shoot. If you are a lousy shot, you're probably going to lose your job or you're probably going to go end up on this duty where, de where it don't require you to use a weapon. Don't tell me, if you don't know how to use it, you don't only become a threat to the enemy, but you become a threat to your, your own neighbor. Man, let me tell you right now, you don't want nobody that don't know how to handle the gun handling the gun. You, if, if somebody didn't know how to handle the gun around me, they got to be skilled in what they're doing. I don't need you to be Barney fifing around me. I need you to be able to know what you're doing with the weapon that you are carrying. The devil can't stand a chance. Don't stand a chance. With anyone who can properly use the sword of the spirit. Let me say this. When Jesus was in the wilderness in Matthew 4 and 4, he used the sword of the spirit. He, 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 he used, see, let me tell you something. Jesus is the perfect example of what I'm saying. When he was in the wilderness, and sometime you and I would have some wilderness experiences. And we need to learn from the one that really knew how to use the sword of the spirit. We need to learn from him to know that when we are in our wilderness experience, how to use the sword of the spirit. And not just you, just you, you got to know without a shadow of a doubt how to use the sword of the spirit. Even when it's difficult, even when you are having your wilderness experience, God is, the, 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 uh, what's crucial to your fight is being able to use the sword of the spirit. Because while he was battling the devil, he used the sword of the spirit. And you see, what is the sword of the spirit? Paul said it's the word of God. So you got to learn how to use the word of God. Because the word of God, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And this is why it's so important for you to study and show yourself approved. This is the reason why it's so good for you to read the word of God for yourself. is because you can't use my word for your demon. There's a lot of times... People want to use my word for, de for their demon. Now, don't say what the pastor say. No, you say the word of God says it is written. You want to know the earmarks of a mature believer is what they say with the word said. I don't came across people. They said, my pastor said, I said, oh, my God, I know right now that this is an immature believer. No, when you say the word of God says, you, can, you can't use my word to fight your demon. Because my battle might be different than your battle. You might have a money issue. You can't use the word I'm using to fight against the money. You, might be, you may have some, some uh, illness issues. You can't use my, my word to fight that illness. I might not be dealing with illness. But you got to get you a scripture to say, with his stripes, I'm ill. You have to get the, a word for yourself to deal with the spirit that you're dealing with. Because I might be dealing with something totally different. Than you at that moment in that time. So we got to understand something. Moving along. 
from this sword of the Spirit, because this is what we got to understand about the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, and it is a arming, piercing weapon that destroys Satan's armor. Let me say something. You, you can have, sometimes there are bullets out there that can pierce and cut right through body armor or bulletproof vests. And I'm here to tell you that is what the word of God is capable of doing, ladies and gentlemen. It is a penetrating weapon. It will penetrate the armor of Satan himself. The Bible said in Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than uh, any two-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thought and attitudes of the heart. See, the, 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 the sword of the spirit is a penetrating power. And it's the only, and, it is, and it's strong enough to break through any enemy's line of defense. There's not a line of defense that Satan could put up that the word of God can't break through. That's why we have to stay in the word. And that's what I like about staying in the word. When you stay in that word, not only will it benefit you, but it'll benefit somebody else. Let me tell you something. You ain't going to be able to get the devil off your son or your daughter if you, don't, if you ain't got the sword of the spirit. You ain't going to be able to get the devil off your, out of your circumstance or your situation if you ain't got the sword of the spirit. You need a weapon that's going to be able to penetrate his armor. If you don't have that weapon and some of this stuff, some of this stuff that we're using the devil laugh at. He know that you ain't, you ain't armed up. He know that you ain't got no weaponry that can pierce his armor. But when you get to a point, when you have a relationship with God and his word, he know that you are armed up. And he going to say, watch out for Joseph. Watch out for Rhonda. Watch out for Janelle. Watch out for Felicia. Watch out for anybody that know how to use the sword of the spirit. You don't believe me? Paul said in Acts, Jesus I know. How he know? He know because he know how to use that sword. And he said, Paul, I know. But what he tells Skeva, I don't know you. You ain't skilled with no word. You don't know no you don't even you caught you have caught and half loaded. And the Bible said those demons ran him down the street naked. The Bible said they overtook him. Overtook him. Let me tell you something. You will never get overtook if you really have that real relationship and you learn how to get skilled. With the word of God. So. <laughs> I'm going to use this last weapon. And we're about to get out of here. Because this last weapon. Is real important. That last weapon. He said. The belt of truth. He said the breastplate of righteousness. He said, charting yourself with the, the gospel of truth. I mean, the, the, the charting yourself with the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the helmet of salvation, and now we're going to deal with prayer. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You, you, let me tell you right. This is, this, this is very important. This prayer part is very important. I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because Paul said in Ephesians 6 and 18, praying always. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let me tell you something. When you think about prayer, prayer is a weapon of communication. Let me tell you something. You do not want to be on the battlefield when you can't have no communication with the command post. The command post and a battlefield got to have a line of communication. And in the line of communication, the battlefield, the command center is heaven strong. It's God's throne. So we got to make sure that we have a communication with God's throne. Because the God's throne is what gives us information and conveys information to us on how we should conduct ourselves and move on the battlefield. You got to have a prayer life. Because prayer... It's how God communicate with you and I. And I ain't talking about you doing all the talking either. Because a lot of times we get on our knees. We do all of the talking. We get up and God, we don't allow God to say nothing. We have to stay there enough to hear what God have to say on the matter. 
It's a dialogue, not a monologue. You got to make sure that God is speaking to you just like you were speaking to God. You got to, you got to know this, ladies and gentlemen. Because a lot of times, this is what I know. A lot of us don't sit still enough for God to say what he needs to say to us. 